My name is Charles Newport. Everybody just calls me Chuck. The story I am about to tell you actually began when I was just 12 years old and in the Boy Scouts of America. I say this because America has been gone for over 1000 years. My Boy Scout buddies and I experienced how to live just off the land, being terrorized night after night by a few sick humans that I used to call my friends, murder of our Boy Scout patrol leader, murder in self-defense and the total deconstruction the planet Earth as we used to know it. This took place 2020, not sure what the date was, I don't even remember what day it was. Time is not that important to us anymore and last names are never used anymore, we are living a paradise and love it very much so. Okay, let's get started before I forget it. It was late in the afternoon on Tuesday, when my Boy Scout Troop 34 arrived at Yosemite National Park. My name is Chuck and I am 12 years old. We all had to work fast and hard together to get our tents and camping equipment set up for the first night of camping. Panther Patrol, my patrol was having trouble getting set up, because of the arguing back and forth. Panther Patrol, the team did not get along together at all. Our patrol leader Nick was not a very strong leader, which proved to be a problem from time to time. After we finally got the campsite together, we were all ready to join the rest of Troop 34 for a night of fun and games alone with big outdoor dinner. At 10 p.m. it was lights out for our Troop 34 and Panther Patrol until early morning where each of the four patrols was to go out on a nature hike and collect samples. I had trouble going to sleep that night, I was very excited to go on my first real nature hike. Early that morning, all the patrols awoke and did their various jobs in order to get ready for breakfast and then we got ready for our nature hike. Each patrol was to take a different trial and collect samples of tree and plant life. After breakfast, Boy Scout Troop 34 gathered in the big clearing. Here, each patrol was to receive their trail location and orders. Once Panther Patrol received the trail instructions, where we were to hike, we got started immediately. Again, we all checked to make sure each patrol member of Panther Patrol had what they needed for the long hike. We had to get started so we would be back before dark. Noon soon came and we all stopped on the trail to eat some lunch. I had two ham sandwiches. After 20 minutes Nick, our patrol leader suggested we all get started again, but as usual, Tom and Pete wanted a little more time before starting again. Just then the whole patrol was arguing on when we should to start again, after everyone cooled down, we continued the hike again. Soon, our patrol came across another trail, being kids as well as nosy, some of us wondered where did it go. I saw Tom, Carl, Pete, and Glenn, they all decided to check the new off the beat trail. Nick told them to stay on the main trail, but of course they never listened to Nick. So Nick stayed behind with me and the other youngest patrol members. After 10 minutes, Nick was yelling for Tom's group to return back to the main trail. But no one yelled back. Nick did not want to leave the youngest kids behind, so he took us with him. As Nick, I and the others followed the trail. About two to three minutes into the new trail, there was a bright flash of white with a moment of dizziness. After our eyesight returned, we all noticed that the forest looked very different, like it was much older, trees taller, and grass and bush much bigger than it was before and the air smelled clean. It also was raining, lightning, and thundering as well. Nick and I started looking for a dry spot to get out of the rain, soon we found a mountain cave, which was perfect. I was looking around the cave and found Tom and the others. They wanted to know where Nick was, I pointed toward the entrance of the cave. 
I saw Nick start to yell at it's Tom for getting all of us in this, in mess. this mess. Tom. After the storm quieted down, we all went outside the cave and Nick, and all of us said, where in the hell are we? Pete who was a science buff said more like what year and time are we in? The forest was really overgrown and Earth's moon was in two pieces, like something had exploded causing it to split into two pieces. The sky was still blue, with some areas a yellowish red. Everyone was scared and Nick said let's see if we can find someone to tell us what the hell happened. Nick and I and the rest of the clan had no idea how we got here. Pete and Glenn were into sci-fi stuff and suggested maybe we went through a time portal. Pete was telling us about the stairs found in national parks all over the world that were time portal of some sort. That one park ranger in the Philippine Islands climbed up on one of those stairways and came down 30 seconds later and soon found he had been missing for 5 years. We were all listening to Peter, but didn't know whether to believe him or not. Nick screamed out, let's right, go back let's to the cave to the we cave found we and make that our base campsite, it's near the portal, there was a small stream there for water and Nick and I had spotted some berry bushes nearby, plus there may be some fish in the stream. We all need to do this before dark. Soon darkest fell upon us and Tom said he could hear movement in the wooded forest, which means wildlife for us to eat and hunt. It got very dark, the only light was from the two moons. They still had some food and snacks left over from lunch, put it all together and divided it, so everyone had something to eat. At daylight Nick, Tom, Pete, and Carl went to find the portal so we could all go back to our time. They left Glenn in charge to watch over the younger kids including myself. I always considered myself more mature than most of the younger children. I was an only child and I was overweight, so I always spent time with my parents or other older people. They all came back just before nightfall and said they had no luck finding it. Peter said to all of them, maybe the portal moves to different spots at different times. Nick and Tom also explained that they went to the ranger station to check if there was anyone alive in the timeline. The ranger station was so old and had been destroyed by something in the past, but no one was there. Peter also added that there was slim chance that the portal was unstable and wouldn't take us back to our time anyway. So we all decide to try to make our home here in this time, whatever this time was. Glenn and I had collected some berries and fruit, like bananas, apples and raspberries for all of us to eat that night. The next day Tom and his friends left the camp and went into the deep forest I believe. They came back later that afternoon with spears and their kill of the day. It looked like a pig or a boar, there were some changes to it, but it still looked mostly like a pig. Nick said we have plenty of berry bushes, fruit trees, and fish to eat, Tom and other three said we wanted real red meat for dinner, not any gay food. Nick just let them go and he and some of the younger kids went to pick berries and bananas. Nick, I and the younger clan refused to eat the boar or pig, whatever you want to call it. So anyway the younger kids under Nick's direction all gobble the berries and bananas for dinner and will try our luck at fishing tomorrow. We really upset Tom to the point, where he and the others decided to find another place to post camp, away from Nick, I and the other young kids. Later on that day, Tom and the other three came back to the campsite and grabbed their belongings and moved themselves to the new site. Their new campsite wasn't that far from the original location. It was positioned about a quarter of a mile south next to the mountain, the same mountain our campsite is next to. I started to notice that over the next two months, Tom and his clan have been acting strange and off the wall type stuff. They looked more like a cult instead of a boy scouts. With no one here to make sure they wouldn't get out of hand who knows just how far they would go. 
They are up all night hunting running around in the forest like animals terrorizing me, Nick and the other younger kids, mostly Nick. One night Nick had enough of Tom and his clan's bullshit and grew a backbone, walked fast over to their campsite, started yelling screaming at Tom dressed like a warrior Indian for them to stop acting like animals and act their age, that we all are in this together and we should learn to live with each other no matter what. Tom grabs Nick and punch him in the face, the others started kicking Nick and soon Nick blacked out. Tom drags him to the nearest cave and tied him up good. The next day I took Ray with me and we tiptoed into the cave Nick was in, untied him and we all ran back to our campsite. Tom and the others were sleeping because they were up all night. Nick was thirsty and hungry, they didn't give Nick any water or food last night. When Tom and the other three woke up and found that Nick was missing from the cave, they decided right away to recapture Nick again, Peter said let's punish Chuck and the rest of the kids for letting Nick go. Tom said I have something special for Nick that goody two shoes. Nick and I were trying to keep the fire going for the night when Tom, Pete, Carl, and Glenn stormed in and grabbed Nick, Ray and me and started hitting us on our backs and sides with their spears while running around us. I swear. It was terrible just waiting there for the spear to puncture my body. Suddenly, Tom and the others grabbed Nick again, but this time they hauled him to their campsite where they continued to beat him. After Nick had blacked out, Tom gripped his machete he had found at the abandoned ranger station and cut Nick's head clean off. All the others were cheering and chanting at what Tom had done. Glenn got an empty coconut and was collecting Nick's blood that was pouring out from Nick's neck. Glenn started painting the camp red with Nick's blood and the other took the rest of it and painted their R with it. Tom took Nick's head and stuck it on one of the spears and turns around and stuck the other end into the ground in the middle of their campsite. The others along with Tom were very happy with the brutal death of Nick. They seemed to be very pleased with themselves. I and the other children knew that Tom and his clan had gone too far this time. Ray and I were surprised they didn't kill us, but now our friend and patrol leader has been murdered, which left the rest of us in terror. Who will be next we all wondered. Me and the rest of the kids dragged Nick's body into a clearing and apply dry timber on top of him. We were able to start fires by using my glasses and sunlight which was going down in minutes. We all gathered around Nick's body while it began to burn and said our goodbyes to him. Later, Tom and the others came back looking for me and Ray, they kept calling our names like they were on something, but all of us were hiding in the rainforest where they could not find us. I guess they knew we were out there somewhere so they kept throwing large rocks out into the wooded areas, hoping they would smash one of our skulls, this told me Tom was willing to kill again. I believe that I and Ray were next and we needed to do something tonight. After Tom and the others passed out from total exhaustion, Ray and I tiptoed into their camp and collected all the spears and hid them. The next morning after waking, Tom had noticed their spears were all gone. Tom screamed out in rage that he will deal with me himself. After the guys had something to eat, they grabbed their knives and headed out into the forest to make more spears and Glenn was speaking about trying to make a bow and some arrows. He was explaining it will be much easier to kill all of us. I knew tonight we better take out Tom, Pete, Carl, and Glenn, either that or we were going to be the ones dead tonight. Ray said they do not act human anymore, they act as if they are the devil himself. After making spears all day, Tom and his group were hungry and tired, they ate leftover food from this morning and laid down to take a small nap to get ready for tonight's big hunt for Ray, I and the rest of the younger kids. Ray, Rick, and I slipped in quietly behind some bushes near where Tom and the others were sleeping. We jumped out from behind the bushes and speared each one of them as they slept, 
making impossible for them to stop us. We could not afford to mess this up. Tom yelled out very loud as he lay there and bled out, it wasn't supposed to end this way for me, I was to rule, rule the entire planet Earth. I looked at Tom and told him, this is for what you did to Nick, Nick did not need to die. Things got real quiet after Tom and the others bled out and died. I was, hell all of us were very bitter after what had happened. The covered area where they were sleeping, Ray, Rick and I tore it down and started it on fire using my glasses. None of us said anything while their dead bodies burnt. We all were very quiet for a few days, thinking we just would like to go home again. We all missed our families and our own time very much. It had been so long since the portal was even thought about, that all of us pretty much forgot where it was located at. It had been at least six months that we all arrived here. At one time this place was thought upon as a getaway from it all and would be total fun. It all turned into a nightmare. So, I told the others we need to try to remember where the portal was located, so we could all go home, back to our families that we all love very much and miss very much. We did just that, combing every grass and wooded foot around the area where we think we came in from. We did this every day hoping to find it one day, in case it was moving in different places. On the third week looking for the portal, in a section of forest that was a little far from where we started looking for it, but Abel and Daniel found it by accident. Abel and Daniel were sort of working and playing together, because they were only 10 years old. They had seen a baby pig run into a clump of bushes and just disappear. They returned to base camp and reported they had found the portal to me. Since Nick has been gone, the rest of them look at me as their leader. When we got to the location of the portal, I took a tree branch and stuck it in, to my amazement, it did disappear. We all surrounded the portal and just sat there glaring at it for a while, wondering if our time was back through there, some were very scared to go back through again, afraid of what was on the other side. I finally said to them I will go through the portal first to make sure it is our home before we all take that step. I will go back to camp and get my things, and make sure everything on the other side is our time and home. I got my things that I thought I might need, put the scout uniform I had on that day and started toward the portal site. As I got near the portal, I heard voices say we're very afraid you will not return, I told them I will go no further than the ranger station and then return to get them. As I entered into the portal I saw a white blinding flash, felt lightheaded for a few seconds and proceeded to mark the portal so I would be able to find it when I return, I began to hear like an air raid siren in the far off distance. I ran to the ranger station as quick as I could. When I got there everyone was in a panic and running toward the entrance of the ranger station. I could tell everyone was in fear of their life. I knew if I was to find out what was going on and find the information I needed, I was going to have to do it on my own. One of the ranger's desktop was a computer screen I think, had never seen anything like that before. The date on the display was June 30th, 2245. I was 225 years in the future. The one wall looked like a TV screen and had emergency warning display that was playing over and over. It explained that our moon base had been attacked by some unknown force from space and blew the moon into two pieces and were now headed for planet Earth, plus it also said please find an emergency shelter as soon as possible. I knew that I needed to get back to the portal quick before it is destroyed and now I understood how the moon got into two pieces orbiting around earth. I put my backpack on and began to run out when I heard and felt a blast very nearby. I turned toward the front entrance when I saw two teen girls taking cover under a table. They looked terrified and alone. 
I ran over and extended my hand to them and said if you want to get away from this war and live out your lives peacefully, follow me they kind of just stared at me until a second blast blew out all of the windows in the rangers station. They jumped from under the table and followed me out into the forest without any questions, while explosions were everywhere around us. When we got to the portal, I grabbed their hands and told them just trust me, we will be out of this in a few seconds. We three entered the portal and disappeared from 2245 into who knows what year we are into now. After we came through the portal, all the boys were sitting and waiting for my return, never expecting me returning with two female additions to our clan. When suddenly there was a flash of light, possible evidence the portal just had been destroyed in 2245. We got back to the campsite and I was very pleased with all my guys, they were very nice to the girls and offered them food, water, and they all pitched in and built a place for them both could sleep safely. Months went by and we all were getting along great. As we got older and were turning from teens into women and men, we realize we might be the only chance for the human race to continue. Everyone including the girls agreed that we were the only chance, because we seemed to be the only humans left on planet Earth, at least where we are in our little part of our world. I said to myself, does it really matter what year it is, we now have the whole planet Earth to ourselves, to restart the human race over and just maybe we will do it right this time.